image was uh, of a modern monarch equal in stature to European monarchs and of a kingdom that was just as civilized and thus not a candidate for colonization. This campaign consciously used art architecture and modern costumes as political tools for projecting to the West a modern image of the kingdom and of the monarch himself. The kings, uh, re, uh, reinvent, uh, uh, the king's reinvent invention of himself, his roles and of uh, Siam's position in the world uh, would sign significantly help to safeguard Siam from colonization. King Jalalungon ascended the throne in 1868 when he was only 15 years old because of his father's interest in learning about foreign languages, modern technology, and sciences. King Jalalongkorn was the first Thai monarch to learn how to speak English from when he was young, as you know, you know from uh, Anna Leonovan's account. Um, the king was exposed to foreigners and their modern ways of life. Because King Jalalongkorn was underage when King Mongkut died, Zhao Priyasi Suryawong served in his uh, place as a regent until 1873. The region allowed the young king to travel to Dutch and British colonies in Java, Malaysia, Singapore, Burma, and India in 1871 to 72. I have just some photographs to show you. This is when the king, um, uh, uh, six years after he became the king. Um, the trip that he travels, uh, during the trip, in Singapore, he was received by the English governor of Singapore. During this trip, the king was exposed to what Siam Weekly called a modern civilized policy. A piece in the Siam repository early in King Jualangon's reign cited the British and Dutch colonies in Asia as examples for science desire path of development. The reflection of the king's interest in costume and textile during his first trip abroad will be presented in our second paper uh, entitled A Royal Fascination Review, King Rama V's Visit to Java and His Batik Collection by Lav Madint and Del Gluckman. Um, I, I'm showing you this. If you have time, go to the um, um, marble temple. There's a um, hall that was moved from the Grand Palace to the marble temple and has a um, um, mural painting that was painted when the king was ordained as a monk. And this is a, a trip to Singapore. So uh, there's a, a more, um, uh, painting that was based on that trip. And uh, this is the one to, uh, to India and Burma in 1871 and 72 at the same place. Um, during his uh, reign, uh, Siam became one of the world's largest exporters of rice and tea. With greatly expanded foreign trade and contact, Bangkok rapidly changed to a city with modern harbor facilities, warehouse, and shops. Westerners were formerly employed by the Siamese as tutors, translators, uh, police officers and other services. The king and high-ranking officers adapted Western ideas and technique in the conduct of foreign relations. As political and trade contacts became easier and more frequent, cultural influence increased. King Jualangon felt that there was a need to westernize the country by building Western-style buildings in which he received Western ambassadors and showed the Siam was a civilized country. He also modified customs, uh, such as styles of dress, table manners, and court protocols. Royal families, high rankings, elites also developed interest in Western decoration, fashion, and photography. Western art became the preferred royal style during the reign of King Jualangon's period. Um, as you can see, that this is the Le Petit Journal that um, uh, came out in 1893 when the king sent a portrait uh, exchange to France uh, before the king traveled to Europe for the first trip. Uh, again, uh, on the cover of Le Petit Journal in 1897. King Jualangon strengthened his position and expanded his knowledge of the international situation by embarking on a series of journeys, becoming the first Siamese king to travel to Europe. He went twice in 1897 and 1906. 
through the king's personal diplomacy with the monarchs and governments of Europe and through uh, contacts via consular and embassies, Siam cultivated a reputation <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> abroad for responsibility and for a willingness to accommodate Western demands and to reform along Western lines. King Jualongon's first trip in 1897 was undertaken in the hope of gaining European support for strengthening Siamese sovereignty in areas not covered by an Anglo-French agreement in 1896. Among the countries the king visited during this trip were um, France, Germany, Austria, England, Russia, and Denmark. King Jualongon established, especially, thank you, a uh, um, I'm showing you some photographs of the trip uh, when he was in Austria, uh, Austria in 1897 uh, with his sons and a Thai student um, in 1897, uh, uh, with Tsar Nicholas II in, of Russia in 1897, and again with Tsar Nicholas in 1987. Um, well, uh, let's see. King Jualongon established very strong ties with the royal families of Denmark and Russia and sent some of his sons to study in these countries. Um, the king had a very close association with Tsar Nicholas II of Russia, who traveled to Siam in 1891 when he was still a crown prince. Um, in fact, it was this relationship along with family connections that helped save Siam from colonization by the French. Um, on, um, the king received many Fabergé objects as gifts from Tsar Nicholas II, and later on, um, Siam is one of the countries in, uh, in Asia that purchased more and ordered many Fabergé pieces. On his second trip to Europe in 1907, King Jualongon uh, purchased more European artwork to add to his collection. Um, he ordered ceramic, glassware, dinner sets, and other household items from Europe. Among these European companies were Rattles and Pills, Fabergé, Waterford, and Alexander Clark. The king also had his Western style costume made. This topic will be addressed by Alisa um, Saisawedwari and Melissa um, Leventon in their paper entitled Western Fashion at the Court of King Rama V, Sources and Supplies in Asia and Europe. King Jula Lungon, uh, uh, um, I have um, photographs of the second trip just to show you the Fabergé piece that he really loved, this piece that was sent by Tsar Nicholas II. He talked about it in his memoir. As you know, that the trip, the second trip was written, he, he wrote um, uh, a book translated um, um, in, in English and um, in Denmark in 1907 and with the Tsar in 1891. One. Uh, uh, the royal household, you know, instead of seated like earlier uh, um, custom, and then later on would order um, dinnerwares and all those from Europe. Um, and this is the one of the throne hall that uh, was done. Um, the marble was sent from Italy, designed. The decoration of mural painting was done by Italian uh, um, artists and completed during King Rama the Sixth Reign. And the pieces from Fabergé that had pictures of Jacri Hall in the Grand Palace are done. So King Jualongon's reign marked the beginning of a new world of reform. <clears throat> the king passed away in 1910 when Siam was not yet a modern nation, but it was at least a modernizing nation. Historian David Wyatt remarks that this new Siam was neither the Siam of 1850 nor the Thailand of 1950 or 1980. By the turn of the century, these institutions had effectively begun to make a nation out of the, old, king, uh, out of the old kingdom of Siam. The next two kings, King Wachiravud uh, Rama the Seventh, six, and King Prachatipok Rama the Seventh, who followed their father, father to the throne, can be credited with making Siam into a modern nation. They did so to a large extent by continuing support for the arts and the way of life establishing during the reign of King Chulalongkorn. Thank you. So now, um, sorry, I hope I didn't take too much time. 
Um, uh, I'm going to introduce our uh, t two speakers um, uh, on the title of their papers, Western Fashion at the Court of King Rama V, Sources and Supplies in Asia and Europe by Alisa.